Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to be talking about new plants coming to Alice Nursery in 2021. My name is Dave Christakis. I'm one of the president of Green Goods out here at ELSIP and I uh, work out mainly out of the Frankfurt location. A lot of our customers probably see me around the yard here and there. I've probably answered a few questions, I'm sure. Um, so welcome. Thanks everyone who's joining us. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll do some questions at the end. So if you have some along the way, go ahead and type them on the side there. Uh, but we'll save some time at the end to, to answer any questions. So without further ado, Welcome to New Plants 2021. All right, so first we're gonna get started by talking about a few of the new shrubs. And before we get really into this, I just kind of wanna mention the plants that we'll be going over in the presentation aren't all of the new plants that we'll have at LSIP stores this year, um, but they are some of the favorites, some of the nice ones we've got coming in. Um, but I would say it's probably 20% of the new varieties that we'll have. So if there's anything you guys are looking for, again, make sure you ask that in that comment section and uh, we'll see what we can do for you guys. All right. So shrubs, new ones for this season. We start off with a great new panicle hydrangea called Limelight Prime. Uh, this is one we saw originally last summer as we started to learn some of the nurseries that we work with. And it's a great, great hydrangea. Uh, one of the nice things about it is it blooms earlier than the original Limelight. Um, and which is nice because it it blooms about one to two weeks earlier, which doesn't seem like a long time. But in hydrangea season, uh, that extra two weeks is, is a huge deal. So um, it's also good in colder climates it, in Illinois here in the northern side. I, I would definitely consider us cold. But when they say colder climates, they're referring to like Michigan and Minnesota and to have reliable blooming hydrangea in those cold climates is a big deal. Panicle hydrangeas out by us never have issues with them blooming. Um, that is, of course, unless you prune off the blooms before they get going in summer. But uh, as long as you get prune it in late fall or early, early spring, you are good to go. They bloom on new wood, so new growth. So this is a nice one, as you can see from the pictures. And if you can, I'll kind of describe it. But they have a pink and red tone as the bloom's age, so similar to a lot of other panicles. Um, but again, the early bloom time and then the color and the shape are one of the differences between the regular limelight. So next on the list here, we got that Little Lime Punch. This one is particularly awesome. Uh, so if you're familiar with the Little Lime uh, Hydrange, five feet tall, typically they average anywhere about three, three and a half feet tall out by us. Garden height, that's what you're going to be maintaining it at. So when you prune it, it gets back to a certain size. You prune it the following year. Average garden height's about three, three and a half. But if you really let these guys go, they can get upwards of five feet. Uh, if you notice in the pictures on the, uh, on the right, you can see the striking color that these things get. Now, this, of course, doesn't happen till fall. But a lot of panicle hydrangeas that get that pink hue don't quite get as red as this one is supposed to get. And I say supposed to get because I haven't seen it in fall yet. I've only seen it in summer. It's the first one, first year for us too. So we're anxious to see. Why don't you guys come out and try them out and let us know. Next on the list is Firelight Tidbit. This is one that is a special one. Uh, so it's what you call a lace cap style bloom, um, but it opens up enough. And you can kind of tell from the top left picture and the bottom right picture, it opens up enough that it seems like one of the fuller blossom heads. Um, all panicle hydrangeas tend to have more of a cone shaped bloom as opposed to the, the round head, the mop head style hydrangea, which we'll talk about some of those in a second. Um, but this one has a little bit of a red eye to it, which is really neat. And I apologize too, if I'm not looking directly at the camera, I've got my presentation on a different screen too that I keep reviewing as well. So. I apologize if, if I'm not making frequent enough eye contact with you guys, but um, so that's a nice one as the blossom set, they have that little red eye and then they open up enough that it kind of makes it seem like that larger bloom. Another unique feature on this one is the fall color of the leaf. That is usual, unusual for a, um, a panicle hydrangea to have a desirable fall color on the leaf. They typically start to kind of quickly turn yellow or orange and then fall very quickly. Um, this one allegedly is going to hold on to some of that color a little bit longer. So very nice hydrangea. Check that out. That's Firelight Tidbit. Next on the list is an old favorite, or I should say a smaller version of an old favorite. 
um, baby Kim lilac. So this is a smaller version of a very popular dwarf lilac, shrub lilac that we sell called Miss Kim. And Miss Kim has been around for years. Miss Kim gets about five to seven feet tall and wide and has that beautiful big leaf and then that light lavender flower as opposed to the, another common dwarf, uh, which is dwarf Korean or blue meringue, which are equally nice in the flowering aspect, but the leaf is a, a little bit smaller, a little bit more oval shape. Sometimes wetter areas can cause a little bit more issues with those as opposed to the Miss Kim or now the Baby Kim. Baby Kim is the same as Miss Kim. Biggest difference, of course, as you could have guessed, it's smaller. So about two to three feet tall and wide. I wish I would have known about this one <laughs> two years ago because that's exactly what I wanted. I ended up planting Miss Kims and I got to hack them back a little bit harder than I'd like. So this is nice that they're coming out with this. A lot of the new plants, the, one of the main features, it seems like that the breeders are doing is making smaller stature plants of popular ones that already exist. Um, lots are a lot smaller these days, that kind of thing. So next on the list, oh, hit the arrow on the wrong one. Sorry about that. All right, now we're gonna get uh, off the flowering stuff, um, so to speak, but we've got a new barberry this year. Now, unfortunately, um, barberry is considered invasive uh, according to the state of Indiana. So we're no longer able to carry that one on our Indiana side, um, but we will have barberry at the Frankfurt location uh, as well this year. And this is a new one we're having called Sunjoy Neal. Uh, it's really nice. And I included two different pictures because a lot of times the, the vendor sites can kind of mess with you as far as what these things look like in reality. If you look at the one on the left, it looks very orange. The one on the right, a little bit more red. And the one on the right is closer to what you will see um, later in the season as the new growth kind of hardens off and the orange more so spring and summer. So it's a really nice plant, um, kind of an up or an upright slash rounded one. Um, you can really shape barberry any way you want. If you wanna make it a little bit taller and narrower, it's best to let them grow to their full height and width and then be vigorous on the pruning. Uh, the one in the top right picture, you could see that could probably stand to be a little bit more tightly manicured over the years, but. All right, moving on. Now we're back into those uh, smaller, the big leaf hydrangeas. This one is actually what they consider uh, a mountain hydrangea. So it's called hydrangea serrata. The, the big leaf ones are hydrangea macrophylla. But the reason this one's on the list, this is hydrangea let's dance can do. And the reason this one's on the list, the biggest thing is that it does produce flowers along the entire length of the stem instead of only. It's got a lot of attributes that are a plus over the standard macrophyllas, which some people have issues with uh, flowering. Um, and so if you do have issues with flowering on those, try not pruning them for one season. A lot of those varieties tend to grow on old wood only. So just a side note, if you are having issues with your big leaf hydrangeas blooming, try that as a first course of action and uh, see if that remedies the, the situation, so. Are we back? Okay. 
All right, we're back. Sorry about that. A little technical difficulties. So uh, hopefully we didn't end or lose connection before we finished talking about the, the can do hydrangea, but I think we were about there. Um, but I was saying um, it can be adjusted as far as the flower color based on the pH, like a lot of popular mop head style hydrangeas. Um, you apply either acid or lime, but in our situation or our area, I should say, our soil is more alkaline. So generally people are applying um, acidic fertilizer and that'll make the uh, flower color appear more lavender bluish. And you're going to want to apply those products when the flower buds start setting. So early summer. All right. Now we are into some new annuals that we'll have coming in uh, this season. And these are really nice. Uh, a lot of the new annuals are basically just new colors. Good. New colors of uh, annuals, of course, that already exist. Same, same thing with the shrubs. Um, there's a new Calibracoa coming out this year, or the, one of the common names, if, if you're buying them in a proven winter pot, they call them Super Bells. So Super Bells is proven winners line of Calibracoa plants. We sell other ones that aren't in that Super Bells line, but um, the Super Bells are very nice, as well as the other ones we carry, of course. But this is Coral Sun. Not much to say about these annuals. Uh, they, they all have a lot of the same descriptions, but they basically mound out to 12 to 14 inch one thing I could say about Super Bells or Calibracoa in general, they're just really great in containers or hanging baskets. They tend not to do so well in the landscape. So try and shy away from planting these things in the ground as they can get overwatered a little bit easier than others. And they start to kind of thin out a lot and they're just not the greatest landscape plant. However, they make one of the best flowering hanging baskets or planters and especially mixed in with other annuals. Um, next on the list, actually three different varieties of coleus. So I put these all on the same slide, um, but they're a really nice plant coleus these days. It's it's common, you know, perception that most coleus plants have to be in the shade. A lot of the new varieties that are coming out these days are bred to tolerate full sun as well as full shade. Um, the best area is somewhere in between that. But if you have an area where you got a little bit more sun and you think it's too hot, try these out anyways. They go great in beds by themselves as a mass display. They really fill in nice, but in containers, they just kind of make a nice upright centerpiece. You're planting everything at the same time. They don't, um, you know, push anything out or anything like that generally, um, but they do grow quite full. If you can look at the, the Coleosaurus on the top right, and I'll read these heights and widths because that text might be a little small, but um, these get 24 to 36 inches wide. And that's one plant. So um, again, that's in the ground with a lot more soil volume and room to grow. If you plant them in the containers, they're not going to quite reach that that height generally unless you have enough soil. Um, but Ruby Punch is another variety. And then, of course, Heartbreaker, they're very similar. These ones tend to, to fly out of the stores a little bit quicker. And at some point, we just can't get any more of this type of stuff in. So Come in early for these guys. Uh, we should have them right around late April, early May. And uh, we'll keep moving on here. So next on the list of annuals, we got some Bacopas. Bacopas are a great one. They're one of my favorite trailing flowering plants. Very, very popular plant. Um, as you can see, they've got a ton of different colors. One thing they have improved over the years is the quality of the non-white Bacopas. So for a lot of years, the white pacopas seem to perform the best either, you know, in containers, on in baskets, wherever. And the blue ones, the pink ones, some of those other colors didn't quite have the same flower power. They were a little bit more stringier, um, but they've definitely been making a lot of strides in those areas the last several years. And this is a new one to come out of Proven Winter out of their snowstorm series of pacopa called Glacier Blue. Um, the next slide, just wanted to make sure, yeah, we do have a Glacier Rose. We'll talk about that. So Glacier Blue is a nice one. Check that out. As you can see, it does great in containers. That purple flower above the, the Bacopa is one of the Super Bells. I believe that's a Great Punch or one of those. And then we got a little purple fountain grass in the center. But these are great ones. One tip on Bacopas, be careful about overwatering them. And try and get the water on the soil only and not on the foliage. It'll help with 
fungus issues and things like that. All right, the next one we talked about, uh, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but snowstorm rose. Basically everything I just said about Glacier Blue, uh, except this is pink. <laughs> so that's another nice new one, and uh, we'll see that in the next couple months here at the store. All right, so this is another super tunia. Super tunias, like super bells, are proven winners version of a petunia plant, particularly a trailing petunia plant. So if you have them by themselves, they'll kind of mound out and start to trail or cascade down a pot, but they won't go down so far as, say, like a sweet potato vine or something like that. So as you can see in the picture in the center, um, it really plays nice. There's three different petunias in this. My guess is they're all super tunias. Um, and what's really cool about Super Tunia Sharon, of course, as you can tell, is it is a double flower. Um, not too many double flowering trailing petunias out there of, of noteworthiness, I should say. So to see one come out of Proven Winners and be in the Super Tunia line is really promising. Um, they don't just pick any trailing petunias to make it into there. There's a lot of trialing, a lot of uh, aggressive vetting, so to speak, um, before a, a petunia can get into the super tunia line. So I'm sure this is going to be another good one coming out of Proven Winners. All righty. And next on the list, another super tunia, Raspberry Rush. Uh, very similar and um, to, the, to the Sharon, but also similar to one called Raspberry Blast that came out several years ago. Raspberry Rush is an improvement on that, basically. Um, as far as the two-tone pink and white blossom. Um, but what's nice about it, I think the flowers are a little bit larger than the Raspberry Blast, and the white on it is a little bit more pronounced, around the Raspberry Blast it seemed to be a little bit more muddled. So I haven't seen these ones in person yet, but just from looking at it and researching it and viewing the pictures online, um, again, because it's new for 2021, that seems to be the main difference. Um, but again, it's a super tunia. You can uh, rest assured these are going to be good quality, well-performing plants in your garden. And in that center picture, we've got some snowstorm white bacopa peeking out on the left. And I'm not sure variety, but that's called pentas at the top. I'm not sure what variety it is, but the plant's called pentas. It's a nice one. And that concludes our slideshow. Again, we're gonna have so much more than, um, than I have in this presentation at the stores. These are just the ones that I, I feel very confidently that we'll have good numbers in all season long. So depending on when you come in, I should say all May long, but depending on when you come in, we should have these items in stock. Uh, you can always call the store and get on our customer uh, action log and we can get you in there and, and um, request plants and call you when these things arrive, that kind of thing. Um, so let's go ahead and I guess we're going to get started with the Q&A portion now. So let's take a look. Bear with me a second. I've got to read through some of these to pick out some, some questions here. Let's see. <laughs> We've got a, some humorous, humorous bunches, I tell you. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so. One from uh, a little bit ago, they're asking about, is the baby Kim a prolific bloomer? Um, so definitely, yes, uh, you know, it's a, a smaller version of Miss Kim Lilac, which Miss Kim's a very prolific bloomer. Um, they do only have one bloom cycle. So it'll happen generally late April, early May. Uh, it depends on the time of year and how warm it is early on and leading up to that. Uh, you certainly, as far as pruning goes, you always want to make sure you prune these. The ideal time is right after they're done blooming in spring. Most people don't do that. They catch them in the fall and that's still okay. You just really want to make sure you don't go and tackle these things in spring and prune them, um, especially if it's a little bit later spring. Sometimes people don't get out to the garden and uh, get their stuff pruned in fall. And believe me, given my career, I'm guilty of it myself. I've got plenty of stuff to prune in my landscape at home as well. So um, but they are a prolific bloomer. They will bloom just as much as the Miss Kims. Again, prune it right after it's done flowering or fall, but never spring. Um, the hydrangeas, next question, 
they were asking, do the hydrangea blooms you showed grow on new or old wood for pruning? Um, that is a good question. I'm actually going to verify on the serrata I mentioned, um, the Let's Dance Can Do. That should bloom on old and new wood. Oh, I got it. Oh, do you need to bring it up on their screen? <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Yeah, so this does bloom on new new wood. Um, I honestly, it doesn't, I, this is information from their site about it. It doesn't say, whoops, it doesn't say specifically if it blooms on the old one, old wood, but it does bloom on the new wood. Um, because they were talking about if it kills back a portion of the plant, there'll still be flower buds open early summer. So we are good there. Um, but I'll get some more research done on that one. We can find out for you. If there's probably a lot of information available to answer that question though briefly online as well. If you if you Google hydrangea, let's dance can do. I apologize, I don't have the answer specifically on that. And then the other hydrangeas that we talked about, those are all panicle hydrangeas. So those are gonna, gonna bloom on new wood only. Um, those ones you're gonna prune in late fall or early spring, but they will bloom on the new blossoms. And those are very reliable. Um, those are one that you really can't get to not bloom. Uh, the more sun, the better on those ones. If you have more sun, tend to have more blooms. Um, partial sun, you'll still have some blooms, but it won't perform quite as it could. But those are very reliable ones. Most of the panicle varieties are hardy to zone three. So we're talking like Southern Canada. So you really don't need to worry about cold tolerance. These things are ridiculously resilient. Um, funny story about a panicle hydrangea. I had a few um, several years ago that I planted in my yard that um, I accidentally let over water a little bit. They were kind of in a lower portion of the yard and I took them out of the ground and I discarded them to the side in a compost pile to, to get ready to, to get rid of later. And, uh, a couple weeks went by and all of a sudden they started leafing out again. And these things are above the ground, bare root. So I planted them back in the ground and wouldn't you know it, they look beautiful today. <laughs> this is about five, six years ago, but um, never, never close the book on a panicle hydrangea. If you think it got stressed and it might be on the way out, give it some time. A lot of times these things recover and it can happen pretty quick. So worst thing you can do is dig them out of the ground if you have an issue with it. Just give it some time and uh, see if it can recover. But uh, that should answer that question. Let me see if we can field some more here. I'll, I'll go all the way up to the top here. How much sun time does a little lime punch need? So that's a great question. Um, same as all the other panicles. Again, the more sun, the better. I guess I kind of answered this one just a second ago before I read it. But the more sun, the better on the panicles. Ideally, six to eight hours or more. Um, but if you have four to six hours of sun, again, that's that's okay as well. They really just shouldn't be anything in anything less than two hours of sun. But I have seen them survive, but just not bloom prolifically in three to four hours of sun. All right. Here's a good one. Uh, can you use holly tone on hydrangea? Um, the answer to that is yes. So holly tone is generally, it's an acidic fertilizer. It's really meant for evergreens. It's from um, Espoma that uh, it's it's a really nice brand, or excuse me, it's not from Espoma, but it's a product that's been around for years. Uh, it's an acidic fertilizer normally used on evergreens. You can use it on hydrangea. Any food is food, which is nice, but of course fertilizer can mess with the, the flower color a little some of your macrophyllas or any of the serratas that can change color a little bit more on the lavender blue side. But yes, you can use it on hydrangeas. Um, it's not the ideal one to use, but you can certainly use it. How often should you fertilize hydrangeas? That's a great question. Um, the, it does depend on the hydrangea, but there's two times of, of year that plants soak up nutrients and that's the spring and fall. And the other times of the year, they're using those nutrients. So as it's going dormant in fall and you fertilize um, hydrangea before it goes into dormancy, um, it will soak up some of that fertilizer. And then 
if you use a time release, a lot of times that stuff is still around in spring and it can give your plants coming out of dormancy in spring a nice little boost to get going in the season. I prefer to fertilize things in spring when you see that life coming back up. Um, but it's a good idea if you if you want to and if you can to do it, you know, maybe in spring and fall. Um, but just be careful how much you're using. Uh, the ideal time, if I had to pick one, though, I would say is, is certainly spring. All right, moving on down the list. The Trilogy Wygelia, um, you're referring to the Checkmark Trilogy as a customer asking, will you get the Trilogy Wygelia in? Um, there is one called Checkmark Trilogy, and we should have that again this year. Uh, it's the one we started carrying a couple of years ago. It's a nice one. I got a few in my yard at home too. Uh, so we should have that one coming up in, uh, I would say, the next month or so, but definitely give us a call. All right. Here's a good one, um, and this will help everyone for sure. There's a customer asking, explain the process of planting a new plant in your landscape. Um, so I, I often tell customers, you know, you can Google how to plant a tree and uh, get 10 different answers because there are 10 different answers. It, it really does depend on where you live. Um, so if you go on our website and um, I wish I had like a link I could share here maybe, but uh, there is a, um, a link to instructions on our planting or planting instructions. Um, and our plant warranty as well. But the basic process, just to explain it quickly, is you're gonna dig a hole about twice the width and about one and a half times the depth of what they call the root ball. The root ball is the soil that the, the pot is, or the plant is rooted into. So just think of the pot that the plant's in, or sometimes the, the burlap sack. If uh, you hear me say the word B and B, I'm referring to bald and burlap nursery stock, usually larger trees, larger shrubs, that kind of thing but you dig twice as wide as a root ball, one to one and a half times the depth. And what you're doing is you're, you're trying to reuse some of the soil that's in the, in the ground. And here's the tricky part. You can reuse it in most cases if the soil ideally is broken up, somewhat loose. So think like black dirt, topsoil. If you're digging into the ground and you're, big, you're pulling out huge chunks of that tan clay that a lot of us have in this area, it's not necessarily the most conducive thing to replant a new shrub and get a new shrub exist, uh, established in, um, but it is good if you can use it to use as much native soil as possible. And so if you have a lot of that clay in the ground, what you can do is just dig it out of the ground, discard it to the side, use a flathead shovel to kind of break it up and loosen it up. And then you can incorporate that back into the planting mix with as, as much as 50% of the total mix. The other 50% is gonna be made up of about 25% compost and 25% topsoil. That 25 topsoil, 25 compost, 50% native soil, that's ideal for larger items like large trees, big shrubs, that kind of thing. If you're going into smaller two, three gallon shrubs and definitely smaller than that, you wanna use more of a mixture of 25% compost somewhere near 75% topsoil. Topsoil is the same as the native soil that's in your ground, um, but and it used to be tan chunks of clay and you'll see that sometimes in the bags if you open it up. But over time with the exposure to sun and air light, that tan clay soil breaks down into that nice loose black dirt. That's what topsoil is. So if you use topsoil, it's the same as native soil, but, and so we say use the native soil, but only if it's conducive to replanting with, i.e. it has to be loose, not that hard modeling tan clay stuff. So I hope that answered the question. But um, again, I don't know if Maggie was able to share. Did you have a link? I don't know. Okay. Um, that we have planting instructions on, but let's see here. Um, a lot of questions. Thank you guys for, for tuning in today. Hopefully I'm not too boring. Sorry about that. This is my first time ever giving a live uh, presentation. So I see, I do see one from, from Shirley. It says, it looks like my lemon daddy is blooming on old wood this year. It's never done that before. Is that normal? So she's talking about lemon daddy hydrangea, which is a kind of a, a cool one. Um, but if it's blooming on old wood and you said this year, I'm assuming you mean it's starting to leaf out from the old wood. 
Um, that is normal. So what you want to do, and because it, it's similar to a lot of other hydrangea macrophylla, let it leaf out. And if you have stalks above ground, sometimes if, if you haven't pruned it at all, the stalks might be like three, four feet out of the ground and they'll start leafing back out at the base like that. So give it a little bit of time, let it leaf back out at the base, but wherever they stop leafing out along those stems, that's where you can make your spring prunes. And that way, you know, at least you have some of that old wood that you should get blossoms on out of uh, coming up in good form. And that'll turn into from that um, soft green tissue wood to a nice sturdier actual hardwood that can support some of those heavy blooms. So is it normal? Yes, it should be leafing out from the old um, the old growth. Of course, those are not flower buds. Those should be your leaf buds coming out. So let's see. So Chris, I have a hydrangea and never bloomed last year, but got really big. What can I do so it will bloom this year? So I and I'm not sure when you joined us, but um, basically this is a common problem with with the macrophylla hydrangeas the big leaf hydrangeas the round ones big green leaf etc um, if it's not blooming most people the issue is that they're cutting it at the wrong time of year so it depends on the type of hydrangea but the most common prescription to try first is to try not pruning it um, or try pruning it in spring the similar to how I explained on how to prune the lemon daddy hydrangea, wait for that old growth to leaf out from the stems that it's going to, and then wherever it stops, cut your cut your stalks at that point. Um, but try not to cut off as many of those old stems as possible. That's where you should be getting your flowers from this summer. Okay. Um, the, there's a good question also from Shirley. Are the spring pre-orders only on annuals or are they also on shrubs? They're just on annuals, vegetables, and herbs. So pretty much greenhouse stuff. Um, the reason we don't do the pre-orders on the shrub side is because a lot of these we don't have in stock yet. Um, the pre-orders on the annuals, vegetables, and herbs, those are in the ground growing at our growing facility. We know we have that inventory already. And so we're able to just run that a little bit smoother, selling things that we know we already have, which is a good good way to go about it. Uh, let's see here. Andrew, you asked if there are a replay on the video uh, because of the interruption. Yes, there will be a replay on the video. You can watch any one of the, uh, the presentations that's been done uh, yesterday and today. Um, and, and it all on our Facebook site, right? And and the website, the regular website or just through Facebook? Okay, so just get check that out through Facebook, guys. And I think that's it. I think I scrolled through the whole list here. Um, there are a few questions that are a little bit more involved. If I, if I didn't get to you, certainly call the store and, and you can talk to one of our associates um, or myself, that's fine, but um, yeah, if I didn't get to you, I apologize. And uh, thank you guys for, for joining me today. I hope you got uh, a little bit of spring fever from, from some of these pictures, but it's uh, always a lot better in person. So come out, out, come out, out and see us. And uh, we look forward to getting going here this year. So.